So I recently picked up this. It's a Canon 2x extender. And I wanted to know, is this any good for aviation photography? I turn to 240, I was at 275. 513 descending to 4000. So my usual aviation photography setup is a Canon 7D Mark II body uh, paired with a 150 to 600 uh, Tamron uh, G2. Um, I've had this lens for about 18 months and I upgraded to it from the original 100 to 400 Canon uh, zoom. And uh, overall, I'm really impressed with it. It's a good body and lens combination, um, but uh, the lens isn't quite as sharp as the, uh, as the 100 to 400 used to be. So it got me thinking, if I paired an extender with a 70 to 200 really good zoom, what results would I get? So join me over at RAF Lake and Heath, and let's find out. So we've got uh, four F-15s airborne already. Uh, we've got another four to the left and four to the right of the runway waiting for their pre-departure checks before they can get airborne. Photograph aircraft. Generally speaking, something's always going on at Lagan Heath, and today was no exception. A seemingly never ending stream of F 15E Strike Eagles and F 15Cs taxied out to runway 24 for departure. And silence. Well, I don't know how many that was, but uh, that was quite a few. Mostly strike eagles today. There's at least 12 strike eagles, maybe four, four F-15Cs. So uh, quite a lot airborne at the moment. Can't hear any more taxiing out, so uh, back to the car. Warm up and uh, wait for them to come back. Good, couple of 
things coming back. Should get one of these going around because they're quite close in together. So hopefully the first one will land or do a go around and the other one will do the opposite. And an extender seems to be working well. A little bit slower to focus though. So this second jet's just doing a quick circuit. And around we go again. I like shooting here because if you get on the right side of the runway, the sun is always behind you all year round. The sun on aircraft is always always a big help. So two thousandth of a second I'm on at the moment. Five six. The big advantages of the 70 to 200 with extender combination is that the maximum effective aperture is f5.6. This means that with my 70 Mark II body, all 65 autofocus points are available. The Tamron, however, is a 6.3 aperture lens, so in Canon terms, it falls into the Group G class of lens, meaning that only five central autofocus points are available. The Tamron, however, does include some electronics in the lens which fools the Canon into thinking it's actually a 5.6 lens, thereby allowing further autofocus points to be used. video at the same time as taking photographs, I'm using my iPhone 10 mounted on top of my camera body. And down. Right, going around. Touch and go. First use of the uh, extender, I'm quite happy with that. I thought it focused a little bit slowly earlier, but I think, uh, I 
think it's actually okay. It's at least comparable to the Tamron. Just for an experiment, as a comparison, I'm going to get rid of the teleconverter so that I can compare it directly with the 70 to 200 on its own. Well, that's got to be it now, I reckon. I've lost count of how many went out this morning. That's how many have come back. That one's just doing a go around. Back into the circuit. So I'm going to carry on shooting until they're all down. But overall, I think I'm impressed with the, uh, with the extender. First time I've used it, as I say. Uh, it just gives me a bit of flexibility with the 2.8 uh, lens, the 70-200, uh, and not always shooting with the 150-600 to Tamron G2. Taking some images taken by the Tamron 150-600, it's clear that on a good sunny day, good details and clarity can be achieved with this lens. Similarly, on the same day, this photograph of the Gripen was taken with the same lens with very similar settings. In fact, very similar settings to those used at Lake and Heath. The weather conditions and the lighting conditions were very similar on both days. But overall I'm really impressed with the photographs I took at Lake and Heath with the extender. Good sharpness and clarity throughout.
I think it's really apparent though that good quality lighting and great skies is what really brings out the best in these lenses. So on conditions such as these, I'm fairly confident in saying that the 70 to 200 with the two times extender is at least as good, if not slightly better than the Tamron 150 to 600 G2.